Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm always excited to uh, look at a new Zeiss lens, particularly one from their new Milvis series, which has really proven to be exceptional, particularly in those that receive a whole new optical formula. Now, some of the Milvis series, already the lenses were already very good. And so what Zeiss has done is really just kind of standardize the look and the build quality, the design of its, you know, top optical formulas in some new do, in a in the new Milvis housing. And so they have a standardized look across the line. But in some cases, particularly at important focal lengths, it was recognized that they needed to step up their game a bit. And so uh, in the first batch, we saw a new 50 millimeter f1.4, a new 85 millimeter f1.4, and then last year we saw a new 18 mm f2.8 and now we have a brand new 35 mm f1.4 this is a whole new optical design and so it is not a rebadging you know rehousing of the existing now classic 35 mm f1.4 so of course the bar is set pretty high when you talk about a new Zeiss Milvis lens and uh, you know with most of the existing ones as a Canon shooter there was certainly room for improvement with the existing Canon lenses. Um, you know, the Canon 85mm f1.2 L Mark II, it's a well-loved lens, but it is also somewhat dated at this point, and uh, it has its flaws as well as its strengths. That's certainly true when you talk about any of Canon's 50mm options, none of which are anywhere close to being perfect. And so the Zeiss Milvis 50mm f1.4, it was, in my opinion, kind of a home run for those that don't need autofocus at the 50mm focal length. This is a different story, however, because Canon has a new 35mm f1.4 uh, Mark II lens that is an exceptional lens that has a whole new um, you know, ref blue refractive optics uh, lens element in there that has done a great job at kind of diminishing some of the weaknesses of the previous 35mm f1.4 while adding, you know, it adds sharpness, but it retains that beautiful rendering and, and bokeh quality. And so in a series of comparisons, in a two-part series here, we're going to look head-to-head -head between these two lenses comparing them both in their resolution at different focus distances, but then we'll also look at the other kind of intangibles that make up the complete package. Color rendition, contrast, chromatic aberration control, flare resistance, uh, and uh, kind of just the general consensus of what makes optics special in a lens like that. So in today's episode, we're going to jump in and we're going to look at the resolution aspect and see how comparing head to head, these two lenses fare out if we throw them into the cage match. So throughout this comparison, the Zeiss is going to be on the left and it just shows up as 35 millimeters right now. And the Canon, of course, is here on the right. And so both of these have been 10 times live view manually focused. And I actually did a couple, I ran this test a couple of times to make sure that focus was not an issue. And of course, mirror lockup, uh, two second delay, trying to get as accurate results as possible here. Now, um, so this is our focus area right here, these knots in the middle. And so as you look side by side, while the lenses are close, um, both at f1.4. I do think that in these kind of textures here, I do see a little more contrast and resolution out of the Canon, which I know to be an exceptionally sharp lens. Now looking over here to the side, once again, if you look at this knot, I definitely favor the uh, Canon's performance and just a little bit more information here in the uh, just the textures of the boards. Now, um, that's true here up into the extreme corners as well that look a little bit smeared, more smeared on the Milvis as compared to the uh, Canon lens. And uh, really the only place that you might find a little advantage for the Zeiss is that the Zeiss does have less vignette and I think that in the extreme corners it may resolve just a tiny bit better. You can see that the resolution um, pattern goes right out to the end of the frame whereas the Canon loses a little bit here towards the very edge. But wide open for the most part I do favor the look for the from the Canon lens at a pixel level. Now, if we stop them both down to f2, 
uh, in some ways things tighten up a little bit, but at the same time, I still do favor some of the texture information from the uh, Canon lens. This is a good area to look here. You can just see that the details are just a little bit crisper, a little bit better contrast in general. Um, and, you know, for example, through this area, textures definitely look better to me on the Canon lens. And so the Canon has obviously held up well at close distances in this comparison with, again, the only real advantage for the Zeiss maybe being in the extreme corners, but there's less vignette to deal with on the Canon, and so now it actually uh, holds up pretty well here, and in this corner, uh, upper corner, I actually favor the Canon look there. I'm going to give one final look at f5.6 to just see how they stack up, and here I would say um, stop down. I, I think I favor the behavior of the Zeiss. Now you can see that it's actually showing off more uh, contrast here, and it looks like a little bit finer detail rendering. And um, in this area here, I mean, it, it's very, very, very close. But in the textures, I just uh, finding a little bit more pop from the Zeiss lens. And so there's an interesting pattern to observe in that when the, the Zeiss is a pop or stopped down, it actually shows a, a, a superior performance, but the Canon is actually the better performer wide open. And look down here towards the edge of the frame that Zeiss advantage with everything stopped down is showing up. But, um, you know, so th through wide apertures, the Canon is better, but the uh, Zeiss actually does show its worth when it is stopped down at close focus. Okay, so looking at this uh, image globally here, we're going to see that, once again, you can see a more pronounced vignette uh, for the Canon lens. And uh, in terms of the color rendition here, you know, I do find that there's a little bit more pop in terms of the uh, color here. There's a very, very slight variance in shutter speed, but it's a pretty minuscule one. And so the Zeiss image looks a little bit better globally in some areas due to having lower vignette. And you know, you can see that if we were to look up in this corner here, you can see that it's brighter compared to the Canon image. And so that's a strength there. One other thing to note, and that is that the uh, Canon lens actually frames, and I've noted this at all focus distances, the Canon lens actually frames a just a little bit wider than what the uh, Zeiss lens does. So that's either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what side of 35 millimeters you want to be on. But I just, just pointed out there is a very slight framing dif dis difference between the two lenses. And so um, this is beyond our uh, depth of field here. But as we come into the area of the depth of field, let's just take a look. And once again, we've got some knots here at the very center of the image that are our um, kind of point of focus. Now, at this distance, you know, frankly, I'm having a hard time making a visual determination between the two. I think that once again, I very slightly prefer the contrast from the Canon lens, for example, in this board here. And as we move out this way, I do think there's a slight bit more texture information in this area here. I think I'm seeing just a little bit more. It's, it's obviously it's tougher here um, as you move on out and towards the edge, um, very edge of the frame. Again, they're more similar than they are different. And so there's a less pronounced advantage, I would say, for the Canon at this medium distance of roughly 40, 45 feet. So now stop down to F2. We'll uh, take a look to see if that changes anything. And again, um, my conclusion is, is that I, I am saying that things are more similar than they are different. And stop down a bit, I would say that the contrast levels even out. I would say that there is just a slight bit of haze that is there on the Zeiss image, uh, more so than what I'm seeing on the Canon. And so again, I think that the, the contrast battle slightly favors the uh, Canon lens. And of course, the uh, vignette comparison does favor the Zeiss a little bit. 
and uh, in terms of color rendition. Again, they're more similar than they are different, but maybe just a little bit more of contrast variation in the colors here. It's worth noting that there is a very slight variation. We're now at f2.8, but the pattern has continued. Very, very slight variation in the way that the two lenses meter. And um, I would say looking at the images that the decision being made there actually favors the Zeiss and that um, there's a tiny bit of underexposure um, comparing these two side by side. And so uh, metering for whatever reason does favor the Zeiss lens. And uh, here as we look towards the, you know, the actual textures that are our point of focus, now I would say that they are they're pretty close to identical, just very slightly richer uh, color variation that is showing up here, kind of a color contrast. And so uh, color, I would say, does slightly favor Zeiss, which you know is again a, a pretty typical Zeiss strength. They do color just so very, very, very well. And like in this area here, there's just a little bit brighter greens um, that are showing up. But again, very accurate colors that are coming off. But I slightly prefer the color rendition from the Zeiss. Now at close distances, when we stopped down to f5.6, we found that the rolls kind of reversed and that the Zeiss looked better than what the Canon did stop down. So we'll see if that's true here. Now in terms, once again, of the contrast between the darks and the lights here, they definitely pop a little bit more out of the Zeiss. And so once again, I would say with things stop down, I do slightly favor the Zeiss image and it's more because of the, the contrast that's there. Resolution is, is very, very similar. And once again, you can see there's a little bit wider framing from the Canon than there is from the Zeiss lens. And you know, once again, this is kind of beyond our depth of field here, but you can see that looking at the image globally, there's just a slight bit more pop, kind of pizzazz to the, um, the Zeiss image, whereas the Canon image looks a little bit more muted by comparison. So if we step all the way out to infinity focus, um, we're going to compare these, both of them wide open, same shutter speed here. And so as I look at this image, once again, as I, I th thought I saw at other focus distance at the center of the frame, I would say that there is a little less of that kind of haze that is there on the Canon lens. And so it looks a little bit more um, contrasty, a little better resolution in the very center of the frame. Now, if we move out towards the edges of the frame, you can see that the, you know, the Zeiss has a superior performance in terms of the vignette. And uh, towards the edge of the frame, you know, in part because of that, the Zeiss lens resolves a little bit better. Um, it gets a little bit cleaner result than what the Canon does. But again, it's, it's a splitting hairs. Both of them are delivering an amazing performance here. But I think in the center of the frame in particular, I do slightly favor what I see here from the Canon, which is on the right side, than what I see from the Zeiss. So at f5.6, both of these lenses are clearly stunningly sharp for landscape purposes. And uh, again, the I would say the basic contrast levels, as we saw under the under comparisons, the other comparisons may just very slightly favor the Zeiss lens that is actually a really, really strong performer when stopped down. And, um, you know, and so you can see that now that some of the foreground has come into focus here that as a landscape lens and stop down, I would say the Zeiss is going to give you the most visual impact, the biggest bang for the buck. But at the same time, the Canon lens is also exceptional and um, you know does a very good job. It's just a little bit more pop from the Zeiss lens on a at infinity and you know consistently at all focus distances when stopped down. And so as you can see, we come out with a little bit of a mixed result in that the Milvis does has it have its strengths. It has lower uh, vignette and um, we saw that it certainly produces perhaps superior color and in terms of a global uh, kind of contrast and color contrast, it is, it is definitely better there. But in terms of raw resolution power, at least with the two copies I'm comparing, we could see that the Canon actually had the advantage. And I say that it had the advantage, it had the advantage at wide apertures, which to be fair, 
For most shooters, myself included, that's primarily where I shoot a wide aperture 35 millimeter lens. There's kind of no reason to have such a big bulky lens along if you're going to shoot it at narrow apertures. But of course the story did reverse and we saw it at f5.6 and I saw also not included in the comparison. I shot at further apertures and, and I could see the same trend there that stopped down the Zeiss was the sharper, more contrasty lens. And so some food for thought, but raw resolution is not the whole story. And so tune back in for the next part in this series where we look at a variety of other things, the drawing or rendering from the lens, the bokeh quality. We'll also look at the chromatic aberration control, the flare resistance, some of these other aspects that add up to the sum total. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you'll look in the description down below, I've got an ongoing image gallery that I'm contributing to from this lens. And by the way, it takes some fantastic photos. So you'll want to check that out. And, and if you haven't already, um, you can follow me on social media, or if you'd like to support me, I've got a, a Patreon account now that you can sign up and become a supporter to help to expand what I try to do with this. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.